ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. you know that what takes us to Islam is the kalima. Ash-shahada kalimi. The two testimonies of faith. If anyone wants to become a Muslim, he has to say those two. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. You must be a witness that there is no deity worthy of your submission but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also you must bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to you to you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show you how to submit the truth and one without the two does not make you a Muslim. What makes you a Muslim is the two together. Brothers and sisters in Islam, there is a lot of confusion in the minds of a lot of Muslims once it comes to the authority of the Sunnah. And this is causes divisions, this causes problems, fitness amongst us as a community. When you say to a Muslim, do this, then he will tell you it's a sunnah. Meaning, it is not mandatory. And sometimes the person is right, and sometimes the person is wrong. The word sunnah, the word sunnah, can be identified by different people in different ways. I know the kickoff is a little bit boring, but it's important. But hang in there. You will really figure out or sort out what is happening in the Muslim world now. But it's necessary to start from here. The word Sunnah can be identified by different people in a different way. When you ask somebody who teaches the Aqeedah, for example, to, uh, to define the Sunnah for you, he's going to tell you the Sunnah is the second source of your guidance. Islam has two sources. The Quran and the Sunnah. And you must follow it. You have no choice. Then, if you ask a jurist, somebody who specializes in telling you this is wajib, this is mandatory, this is haram, this is halal, 
What is the definition of sunnah? He will tell you the sunnah is the recommended. What do you mean, يعني recommended, يعني مندوب, مستحب? Means if you do it, you will be rewarded, and if you do not do it, you're not punished. You see what the mixture is? The mixture is the definition of the sunnah by the scholars of the fundamentals of the religion, al-aqidah, and the definition by the jurists. Now, I go back and say, when you come to a brother, and I know this may hurt some of you, but I'm sorry, it's the only example that on the top of my head. Grow your beard, he tells you it's a sunnah. He's confused. What is he trying to say that it is not mentioned in the Quran? It is mentioned in the sunnah. But again, if something that is not mentioned in the Quran and it's only mentioned in the sunnah does not make it mandatory, you see, he mixed it with the definition of the jurist. Okay, here are, here's two, two situations here. You tell somebody to pray the Hajj that night, and you tell somebody to grow his beard. Both of them will say it's a sunnah. Which one is right and which one is wrong? I'm asking you. The head, is the head mandatory? No. So it is a sunnah. That means what? You're not sinful if you leave it. Yes, it is the act of the righteous. But about, what about the one who said no to the beard because it's a sunnah? You know what he's referring to? It is not mentioned in the Quran. It's mentioned where? In the sunnah. But now, because it's mentioned in the sunnah, in the hadith, does this make it? It makes it mandatory. If you really understand this piece, you will get a lot of stuff sorted out. The mixture between the definition of the word sunnah by the jurist and by the scholars of aqidah confused the Muslims. Some of the commands that we have are mentioned in the hadith, but they are still mandatory. What is your evidence? قَوْلُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet ﷺ commands you to do, do. And whatever the Prophet ﷺ banned you from doing, do not do. في القرآن قال تعالى مَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Whoever, whosoever obeys the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ By your Lord O Muhammad, they will not believe, attain iman and faith unless they appoint you as a judge. وفي صحيح البخاري امرأة أوبة من بني أسد اسمها أم يعقوب. she came to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. this is years after the death of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فقالت له يا ابن مسعود. she said to him يا ابن مسعود. إني أسمعك تلعن هذه وهذه وهذه وهذه. وقد قرأت القرآن.